Hi, it's Richard from Ignite Growth. I just thought I'd do a quick video on generating traffic, B2B traffic, and how we generate it through to our website. There's multiple ways to do this, and traffic is never really the problem. Getting a volume of traffic in the modern world is never a problem. Actually, the conversion is usually the problem, either website conversion or once those um, that traffic's been converted into leads, it's the sales process that's not converting. So get your conversion uh, areas right first and then come back to this video and look at the different types of traffic you can generate to your website. So let's quickly go through the four main types. Uh, oh, sorry, the three three main types. I'd say offline as well is in here, um, but organic traffic. So this is ge basically generated um, via direct traffic so having your website on your business card having your website on your brochures having your website on different partner sites you know that's direct traffic that'll come through where people actually just they see your domain name and they type in your website address into google uh, to come straight through to you you've then got search and seo so Organic search is really where we're ranking our pages on our website, ranking our blog posts for certain keyword phrases that we know people will be searching for and that we want to be seen for as they ask questions, as they want to find solutions and find different options for themselves to sort out a problem that you can solve. So again, that search traffic and the SEO traffic is it's free traffic but it's long term. That's gonna take you at least 12 months to start ranking from a lot of the keywords that you identify in your keyword list, then create the content, then get backlinks to it, start getting guest blog posts linking back to it, start sharing it on social media. So again, it takes more time, but it's free traffic once you've got it coming through. And most websites will have three or 400 visitors a month through their search and SEO traffic without really trying. Then you've got blog traffic. I've kept that separate because actually having a proper blogging strategy and a list of the keywords that you're going to be writing posts for. So I've got things like this, I've got spreadsheets, and this has all the keyword phrases that I want to rank my videos for, my blog posts for. I always write blog posts and then embed the videos that I've got on YouTube. So all of this is about generating blog traffic. And when I look at a lot of people's Google Analytics, I want to see that six or seven of those top 10 pages are blog posts, that they've got really good quality content that's valuable to their target audience and that is bringing people through, educating and bringing people through. And that's really what your blog wants to be doing. It wants to be answering questions. It wants to be looking at the mistakes people make. It wants to be looking at the actual challenge and the pain point itself. Um, it wants to be looking at some of the solutions. It wants to be looking at the upside as well. What's the payoff once you get all this right? So all of these things can be put into blog posts. Very, very important because it's not done very well in B2B. But when you get this right, you'll start dominating and becoming, positioning yourself really as that thought leader and that expert in your market. So that's the power of blog posts. Plus, it feeds your social media. So if you go... Down here we've got social media. A lot of your blog posts being shared over and over again on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on YouTube videos, things like that is going to drive that traffic again back into your website. Email marketing. Again, email marketing is still so successful and people always seem to say to me, oh, email doesn't work anymore, does it, Richard? Yes. If you're relevant and you're going to the right people, and again, it's all back to, do you understand the sector you're targeting and the people within those sectors, their pain points, the mistakes they're making? If you start sending relevant emails to the right people and it's really relevant to them, they will open it, they will engage with it. So again, don't forget email and get yourself a really robust email marketing campaign because that will drive a lot of traffic and there'll be informed people who know you as a brand as well. I'm not talking about sending out 40,000 emails as uh, spamming people. I'm talking about very targeted things, connecting with people in the right way and then sending them emails and getting them engaged with you and connected with you. So that'll bring traffic. So those four areas of organic traffic, yes, they're hard work, they need a lot of planning out, but once they get going, that traffic will be coming in all the time and you'll be slowly ranking higher and higher as you get more authority. Social media, so social, Really in B2B, you're going to be focused on three platforms, LinkedIn, Twitter, and in my view, the most underused one is YouTube for videos. So a lot of these videos you're watching on here, 
they've been put up here because they're targeting certain keywords, they're being informative, but it brings me the most traffic. YouTube sends me more traffic to my website than any of these other two. Okay, I probably get more leads from LinkedIn, but actual levels and volumes of traffic, YouTube is fantastic for that, especially if you use cards, if you use end, uh, end cards on your videos, if you use information cards on your videos, if you use links in your descriptions, you know, all of these things drive traffic. So don't forget YouTube. But again, having yourself a robust posting strategy on social media. So what are you sending out daily on LinkedIn? Have you got a newsletter on LinkedIn? Are you running polls on LinkedIn? Are you sharing videos and blog posts on LinkedIn? You know, and then on Twitter, again, people say Twitter's dead. I, I just disagree totally because the num amount of traffic, again, and good leads we get from Twitter for our clients and for our own business is ridiculous. But you've got to approach Twitter in a very different way in 2022 and, and in the modern age because you really need to be posting a minimum of 10 times a day on Twitter. Otherwise you just get lost in the noise. It's a very noisy platform. People are really consuming Twitter by going through the phone like this, just scanning through once, twice, three times a day, they'll scan through Twitter. So it's really like a news feed. So treat it like a news feed and post regularly and mix up what you're posting. Uh, again, polls are very good on Twitter infographics are really good use hashtags a lot more on twitter and then start tapping into the community on twitter so if you're working in the manufacturing vertical then what are the main magazines you want to be following what are the main events the main shows every year the trade shows you know all of these big conferences that are run in your sector they'll all have a hashtag and they'll all be posting on twitter in the build up to it people will be attending it so again you can get involved in those conversations very naturally but again, it just requires hard work, but it really is. I always feel Twitter's a community thing. If you want to be really embedded in a sector and a community and get noticed, then Twitter's the way to do that. LinkedIn is more personal. Yes, you've got a LinkedIn business page, but it's your personal profile that will bring the most leads in. You'll be able to reach out. My personal way to do it is I reach out to 20 people every morning. Then I engage with different people's posts. I'm very, very social, I like posts, I share posts, I engage with people, and then I connect with them. And that's really how I built my LinkedIn following up 20 a day and then over the year you just build more and more and more connections in your area um, and then leads come from that whenever I run a workshop I post on LinkedIn I fill them all of those things are fueled by LinkedIn and good relationships and using LinkedIn in the right way okay so we've gone through social media the last one I'm going to touch on in this video I mean, it's just uh, eight minutes long now so I'm going to just touch on paid because again, I think people are scared of paid, certainly in B2B, because they've had bad experiences in the past or they've maybe used an agency who were targeting all the wrong keywords. They weren't seeing proper leads from them. So they've sort of spent thousands of pounds and not really seen a return. Well, in my view, the power of paid is really in remarketing, building custom audiences of people who've visited your website, different pages on your website, people who've engaged with you on social media. This is where the power of paid is. Yes, Google Ads can be really, really highly focused, especially if you get your keywords right. So when you're doing your SEO up here, you've built out your keyword lists, look for intent keywords. What would someone type in if they were actually looking to buy your product, your service or your solution? And really build very tight keywords, very tight campaigns around that on Google Ads. And it can be highly profitable. It really can be profitable. But again, you're probably going to go through three or four iterations before you hit the right formula. So don't give up on Google Ads. Keep optimizing. Make sure, as I say, you have very, very tight, um, tight keyword uh, ads in here, very tight um, keywords that you're targeting in here and make sure they're intent based. So people will only type that in if they're down at the decision making stage. That's how I would use those. LinkedIn ads are great for awareness and for targeting roles. If you know a very specific role within a company and a size of company, there's never been a better platform than LinkedIn um, to run a campaign through there to get to the marketing manager of a company of a certain size with so many employees in a certain sector. You know, So actually targeting roles with LinkedIn can be really useful, especially when you combine that with building out custom audiences. So I will build custom audiences in LinkedIn and I will send different offers to those custom audiences to engage with them. But I'll also 
um, target roles within there as well and get those people segmented uh, in my custom audiences too. So those are the areas I would focus on with traffic. As I say, don't be scared of paid, just really you're going to use paid to get your volume up. And once you get paid campaigns working, again, the, the thing I always love about them is I can scale up or down just by spending a bit more money. But when they're all optimized and you know they're gonna convert, it doesn't matter. If you, if you spend a pound on your Google ads and get two pound back, you get to that stage where every pound you're spending, you're getting two pound back, then growth becomes very predictable and very scalable, doesn't it? It just means if I increase my spend here, I get double the money back. So again, try and get to that stage and have that mentality with your paid ads. Always look at the ROI, keep optimizing, keep testing until you hit that magic formula because then scale is literally a matter of I'll increase my budget next month and that will double the leads coming in. So it makes it very, very predictable, your growth, which is what we're trying to get to. All right, so hopefully that answers some of your questions on traffic. I will do some separate videos on each one of those elements of traffic and how to make it work and enable it for your business. But I just wanted to do a general look at traffic because it's something that I think in the modern world, everyone can generate the level of traffic they need to get to those revenue goals they need. So it's just a matter of mixing these up and making sure that they're all working in harmony in your business. All right, take care and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.